If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. My husband Murphy and I travel full time in our 1969 Volkswagen bus. So we just hit the road again a few days ago. We are traveling as fast as we can south, which in a Volkswagen bus is not very fast. Um, we travel on back roads, we travel slow. Uh, we go about 200 miles a day is what we've been averaging. So right now we are in West Virginia. That sounds right. I don't know. We're going as fast as we can down to the southern Louisiana, New Orleans area. Um, we're hanging out there for a little bit. Sorry, can we just talk about my outfit for a second? I'm wearing like all the clothes that I have. No joke. I have this sweatshirt on. I have a nano puff jacket, a sweater, a long sleeve shirt, a tank top, and two pairs of pants on and boots and socks. I'm just living my best life. It's cold. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about hygiene when living in a bus. Inevitably, when somebody finds out that we're living and traveling in the bus, one of the first questions is always like, how do you shower? Or do you ever wash your hair? Where do you poop? And it's a big question, you know, like how do you survive and be a clean, normal human when you're living in a car? So obviously we don't have a shower or a bathroom in the bus. Um, so that is a problem that needs to be solved on a daily basis. First of all, we don't shower every day or even close to every day. Um, we shower, depends on what we're doing. When we're like in full travel mode, like trying to get somewhere like we are now, we'll shower probably once a week. And your body kind of adjusts to that. Like at first it felt kind of weird to me to only shower once a week because I was like, a one or sometimes even two shower a day kind of gal. Uh, so it took like a little bit of adjustment, but it actually feels completely natural to me to shower once a week now. But there are things you can do kind of in between to, to feel clean. So for instance, I will wash my face every day. Um, I don't use soap on my face anymore. I, I really just wash my face with warm water. Um, I just find that's what is best for my skin. So. I just wet, sort of a wet cloth, warm water, pat it on my face, um, wipe it dry, and that makes a big difference in just feeling like a little bit more awake and clean and fresh. And then I'll just throw a little bit of coconut oil on my face uh, just to moisturize a little bit this time of year. So when you're not able to shower every day, one of the things that we found really helpful is to just overall use less products on your skin, um, hair, and body. So for instance, like I don't use heavy moisturizers. I do just use coconut oil. Um, we don't typically use sunscreen very often. Uh, we're both very fair skinned um, and do need protection from the sun, but we'll get that protection from layers. Um, so something like a sun hoodie that has SPS protection in it, um, we'll wear that instead of putting more stuff on your skin that at the end of the day is gonna make you feel kind of like sticky and dirty. Same thing with bug spray, we'll cover up rather than just like douse ourselves in bug spray. And uh, both of us have actually stopped using deodorant, which I know what you're thinking, you guys stink and live in a car, ew gross, but the body adjusts to not having deodorant or antiperspirant. At first it was like a little bit of a, a weird change, especially for me. I stopped using deodorant over the summer, which the body gets much more sweaty um, and much more stinky that time of year, but I really have found that my body is calibrated to it and that I, I, don't, I don't think I stink that much. But it helps. It, it helps in feeling like a little bit cleaner. Like you're not just like putting all these products all over your body that you then eventually feel like are stale and need to get washed off. So if you're only showering like once or twice a week, definitely something I would recommend trying. So in addition to prioritizing washing my face every day, we also wanna make sure that we have clean hands. If you can't wash your body every day, at least make sure that your hands are clean. The way that we wash our hands is important. A lot of our living space is the outdoors. We want to make sure we're respectful of that when we're cleaning ourselves. The first thing is you want to make sure you have a phosphate free and biodegradable soap. So we use um, Dr. Bronner's. Oh, you can see how cold it is. Look, that's not, 
it's not normally that color. It's usually clear, but it gets cloudy when it's cold. It's cold. So we use Dr. Bronner's for everything. We wash our bodies with this, we wash our dishes with it, we wash our clothes with it. So it's a good kind of multi-purpose soap to have. Heat up some water in a pan, put the soap on your hands and then pour the hot water over your hands. So you're not washing your hands in a pot that you might cook your food out of, right? So you pour the water over your hands to rinse them off and just make sure that any soap that gets on the ground is diluted uh, with the water. So we typically also brush our teeth outside in the morning and in the evening. One thing to think about if you are gonna brush your teeth outside is when you are spitting the toothpaste out, just try not to spit it all in one big glob or all in one place because animals will eat it. Um, it's not the greatest thing for them to eat. Try and spray it all around if you can to kind of just disperse the, the toothpaste a little bit. Same thing with any water that you're using, just try and disperse it when you throw it out. And then another thing just about not showering every day, and this is sort of specific to um, my hair and not having brushable hair and having dreadlocks, but in between washing my hair, which I do do once a week every time that I take a shower, is I'll just use a little bit of cleansing oil on my scalp and the roots of my dreadlocks just to keep my scalp healthy and a little bit moisturized and just to give a little bit of stimulation to my scalp every day. So I'll do that once or twice a day just depending uh, on how my scalp is feeling. But again, that's pretty specific to having dreadlocked hair. Okay, so when we do shower, we found the best solution to be a Planet Fitness membership. So we tried actually a heated outdoor shower. It was a propane fueled shower and we had that it was before we were living in the bus but when we were taking some longer trips in the bus we tried using that and it just wasn't good. I don't have any other words for it. It didn't get that hot. The water pressure wasn't really enough to get your body clean. It kind of was just a waste of space to be honest. Instead of having something with us to shower we just got a membership to Planet Fitness. We have the black membership, which is $21 a month, and it allows us to go to any of the Planet Fitness locations throughout the US, and there's like 1,500 of them. So far, we have not really struggled to find a shower when we want one. If we don't have access to a Planet Fitness, we can always heat up some water and take a, what we call a pot shower, so you're showering out of the pot, and using the same method that you would use to wash your hands, so heating it up, putting soap on your body and then pouring the water over your body. Typically if you, you want to do that, especially if you're out in the woods, like on a durable surface, not something that's going to wash away a bunch of this topsoil or anything like that. So if you're on maybe like a rock or something like that, it's a good place to shower. And then worse comes to worse, if you want to just freshen up a little bit, we do have some baby wipes. Um, you can just take a baby wipe to any area that you might feel like is a little bit dirty and just freshen up a bit. So let's talk a little bit about clothing and washing your clothes. So the biggest thing that I found is when you wear your clothes one time, it does not mean that they're dirty. I will re-wear clothing a bunch until it actually seems dirty to me. So especially outer layers, uh, I will wear over and over and over again until I feel like they are actually soiled and dirty or if I spill something on them. Um, this will keep your laundry needs down obviously, but also help your clothes last longer. You're just not washing them as often. For instance, like we have our laundry bag down here now and We've been back in the bus for like three or four days and like this is all the laundry that we have, right? There's like a pair of yoga pants in here, maybe some shirts, like some underneath layers that um, have gotten dirty. But for the most part, we're just re-wearing things. And also when it's this cold, you don't want to be like taking all your clothes off and then putting all new freezing cold clothes on. Like it's much better just to keep your warm clothes on that your body has already warmed up. So when we do do laundry, um, we typically go to the laundromat. Uh, like once a week, it'll be around $10 for us to do um, all of our laundry for a week, the week, depending on how much we have. Um, and then on occasion, if there is something that gets something spilled on it or something that we want to clean immediately, we'll put some hot water in a tub and a little bit of Dr. Bronner soap and just wash it by hand and then find a place to hang it up to dry. All right, let's talk about pooping. People ask me all the time about where I poop. For some reason, if you 
live live in a van, people want to know about where you poop. So here we go. The reality is we use public restrooms most of the time. So I would say probably 90% of the time we are stopping at gas stations or truck stops or grocery stores. Any place that has a public restroom, that's where we're gonna stop and do our business. And sometimes that doesn't exactly align with your function of your body. So you might get to a grocery store and be like, all right, there's a bathroom here. And you kind of gotta make it happen. You gotta be like, this is my time to poop. All right, body, like, let's poop. I don't know, is that too much information? I don't know, you guys are gonna know a lot about pooping. So if we aren't able to go in the public restroom, the other thing we do is dig a cat hole. So we have um, a trowel, this is, this is ours, and that's dirt on that, by the way. Um, it's very lightweight. Um, I like this one because it's got like a good point on it. You can dig really fast with it. So like I said, you're outdoors, so you want to be respectful and responsible with digging your cat holes. So you want to be 200 feet away from trails or waterways, which a good way to measure that is it's about a 70 steps. So take approximately 70 steps from any trail or waterway. Dig a hole. You want the hole to be about six or eight inches deep and about four inches wide. So you dig that hole, do your business, bring a little bit of toilet paper with you. Um, wipe what needs to be wiped. This is really weird to talk about. I'm gonna keep going. Wipe what needs to be wiped and then you wanna bring your toilet paper with you. So what helps is to bring a, a little extra toilet paper. So bring what you want to wipe with and then bring some extra with you to wrap that in so that you can wrap the dirty toilet paper and some clean toilet paper, put it in your pocket to dispose of when you get back to your car or camp or wherever you are. Then after you do your business, you wanna cover up the hole with some leaves, the dirt that you had dug out um, so that it's inconspicuous, but also the leaves and debris on top will help with the breaking down of the stuff in the hole. Oh, last but not least, we also have um, some wag bags. I'll show you here. This is our Go Anywhere toilet kit in extreme emergency cases. So I actually haven't used one of these yet, but Murphy has. It's basically like a big bag that you can fold out and like go to the bathroom in and then has um, a sealed little bag you can put that bag into that can then be thrown away like in any trash can. So there's some little granules in there that absorb some of the wetness and deodorize and it takes care of the waste. Yeah, that's, that's how we go to the bathroom. All right, so hopefully that answers some of the questions you might have about how we stay clean living in the bus. Thank you so much for tuning in. I try to put out new videos every week, so subscribe down below and hit the like button if you wanna see some more videos from us. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye friends. Wow, I can't get this out. I live in a car, what do you want? What am I trying to say?